Today, I have a proposition for you. If you're interested, how would you like to be from the best of the believers in faith? How would you like to be from the nearest and dearest to our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yawm al qiyamah How would you like to be or reach the status of those who are fasting during the day and praying during the night without having to fast during the day and praying during the night? How would you like to have the key to the heaviest deed in the scale of good deeds on Yom Al Qiyamah and the deed that will be the most deed that will enter the people into the Jannah and have a promise, a guarantee from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you will have a house in the Jannah. Are you interested in this proposal? All of this can be attained. All of this can be obtained through one action, which is husnul al khuluq, good manners. If you have proper conduct, good Islamic manners, you can get all of the things I just said, all through your good manners, your good behavior. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Akmal al mu'minina imanan ahsanuhum khuluqa. The best of the believers in faith are the best of them in their manners. And he said, alayhi salatu was salam, inna min ahabbikum ilayya wa aqrabikum ilayya wa minni manzilatan aw majlisan yawm al qiyamah ahasanukum akhlaqa. That the most beloved of you to me and the closest of you to me on the day of judgment will be the best of you in manners. The best of you in manners. When you have good manners, you're the most beloved to the Prophet ﷺ. And you're going to be the closest to him ﷺ, yawm al qiyamah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Inna al mu'mina la yudrika bi husn khuluqihi darajata al saimi wal qa'im. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet ﷺ said that the believer can reach with his good manners the rank of the one who is fasting throughout the day and praying throughout the night. The Prophet ﷺ said, أَثْقَلُ شَيْفِ الْمِيزَانِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ That the heaviest thing in the scale on the day of judgment, in your scale of good deeds meaning, is your good behavior. The Prophet ﷺ said, أَكْثَرْ مَا يُدْخِلَ النَّاسِ الْجَنَّةِ that the most actions that will enter people into the Jannah will be their taqwa of Allah, their fear of Allah, and their good manners. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet wasallam said, Ana za'imu, that I am a guarantor. Pay attention. The one who is guaranteeing you is Rasulullah wasallam. He said, I am a guarantor with a house in a'la al-jannah, in the highest levels of the jannah, liman hasana khuluquhu, the, who have, the one who perfected his good manners. A house in the jannah. And that's why you find Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you look into his seerah, and you look into his manners, you look into his actions, you see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about him, praising him. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ that you're of a high moral status. And his wife Aisha radiallahu anha, when she was asked, tell us about the khuluq, the manners of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said, kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an. That his manners were that of the Qur'an. So any good deeds, any action, good morals, good manners that Allah commands us to do in the Qur'an, you'll see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the first to do it. وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna And say to the people, good. You find the Prophet ﷺ was the best in speech when he talked to people. And to be adil, to be just, you find the Prophet ﷺ was the most just in his dealing with the people. When you look into the seerah of Rasulullah ﷺ, they described him, they said we never, his sahaba radiallahu anhum said we never saw Rasulullah ﷺ except for that he was smiling. 
and the impact when you act upon this good conduct, this, this sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, of smiling. One of the scholars was telling a story when he traveled to South America. A 14-hour plane trip. Allah Akbar. And he said, I don't have a lot of English. So I couldn't really talk to the, 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 with the cabin crew, the man who kept passing me. I couldn't really talk to him in English that much. Yes, no, thank you, give me some water. That's about it. That's all he had. Subhanallah, but he said every time he passed me, he said I would smile at him. I would smile at the man to revive the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to show them the beauty of Islam. Because sometimes when the media, all they see, when they see a practicing Muslim, Allahu Akbar, they see something that's not from Islam. So he said, now I'm going to give a positive message about the ones who practice Islam by implementing the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by smiling. Subhanallah, when he got off of the plane, the non-Muslim cabin crew says to him, thank you very much. And he told him, he said, for what? And because he's saying, it's usually, we should be thanking you, not you thanking us. So he said, what are you saying thank you very much for? He said, thank you for your smile. Allahu Akbar. The sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when these sunnahs are implemented in the society, look at the impact it's going to have on the society. When we come and we act like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we implement the manners and the conduct code of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you come to your brother and everybody says to them, As-salamu alaykum. Not adatan, out of custom, but ibadatan, out of, out of worship. What does it mean? Peace be unto you, my brother. Smiling at your brother. Loving your brother, because you have the akhuwa, the brotherhood in Islam. And how you deal with your brother, how you deal with the people, that you're honest with them, that you don't lie, that you don't cheat, because this goes against what we're ordered as Muslims to have good conduct. That you're somebody who controls your anger at the time of anger. You're somebody who controls his tongue. You're somebody who's forgiving. All of this is from the manners of Islam. The manners of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though he was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was patient when dealing with people. The Arabi, the Bedouin, comes and pulls on his on his clothes, alayhi salatu was salam, until he leaves a mark on his body, alayhi salatu was salam, pulling on him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is just and we're dealing with him. He's patient in dealing with him. Controlling himself, having good manners. Never, never having bad conduct, alayhi salatu was salam. This is the level of husn al good manners. And this is if we implement it, what we can reach as individuals, as societies, as individuals, we're relaxed inside. You feel good when you have good manners in dealing with people. And people like you, people love you, love to deal with you. It's beneficial for the individual and for the society. But there's something, because now we feel good. Alhamdulillah. We got revived in this khutbah saying, look, we can reach, mashallah, from husn al khuluq. Look, look at the status we can reach. But I have to tell you something. I have to be honest with you. I have to share a very scary hadith with you. Because we have to know. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they told him a story of a woman. They said, this woman, she prays all through the night. She fasts through the day. And she does this and this, and she gives sadaqah. Immediately when you hear these characteristics, you automatically think what? Jannah. She's going to Jannah, Allahu Akbar. Because of her deeds. How she strived for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these good deeds. But there's one problem. They said, but she harms her neighbors with her tongue. She harms her neighbors with her tongue. And I want you to reflect, how many times have you harmed somebody else with your tongue? That crazy person driving down the road, may Allah guide him, when he cuts you off, and you said to him, beep, beep, beep. That person at work who's under you, and you raise your voice, you treated him ill because you think he's less than you. You didn't control your tongue with one of your neighbors, one of your colleagues at work. Now remember, this lady, she prays through the night. She's fasting in the day. She's giving sadaqah. She's doing this and this for all these good deeds. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا خير فيها 
The Prophet said, there's no good in her. She's from the people of the hellfire. Think about that next time when it comes to controlling your tongue. And then they told him about another woman. They said, she prays the maktubah. She prays the five daily prayers and that's it. She gives a little sadaqah from some, some, some sour milk that she has. And that's it. But she doesn't harm anybody. She doesn't harm anybody else. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hiya min ahlil jannah. She's from the people of the jannah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to remind ourselves constantly about the status of good manners in Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Innama bu'ithtu li utimmim salih al akhlaq That verily I was sent. Sent by who? Sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all of mankind. Rahmatan lil alameen. A mercy to mankind alayhi salatu wa salam. Sent as the last khatim and nabiyin. The seal of the prophets. He said, Innama bu'ith. Verily I was sent to perfect good manners. This is the status. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to perfect good manners. And that's why you get such a great reward when you implement and act upon good manners in Islam. And I want you to reflect on this story. And imagine that you know you're about to die. You know your time is coming closer. And you have somebody that you love. And you want to give him some advice before you go. Imagine the advice you're going to give him. And now pay attention to this story between Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to love Mu'adh. He came to him one day and grabbed him by his two hands alayhi salatu wa salam. And he said, Ya Mu'adh, inni la uhibbuk. O oh, Mu'adh, verily I love you. Imagine Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling you that he loves you. He sent Mu'adh before he died alayhi salatu was salam to Yemen. He sent him to Yemen to call the people of Yemen to Islam. And he told them, you're gonna to come to the people of the book and give da'wah this, focus on this, focus on that. Mu'al said, in the last thing, the last piece of advice that I heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before he left, he said, as I'm putting my foot, huh, as I'm getting onto the saddle, he said, the last thing I heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, Hassan khuluqa lil nas ya Mu'adh ibn Jabal. Perfect your manners in dealing with the people, O Mu'adh ibn Jabal. This is the last piece of advice he heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knows the effect, the impact that's going to have on that day when he goes and he calls those people. He knows the, uh, the impact that's going to have when he is meeting with the people of Yemen and inviting them to Islam. Hasan khuluqa lil nas. Perfect your manners when you deal with people. When we go home today, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to remind ourselves of the importance of husn al of good manners in Islam. We need to remind ourselves and reflect on our own manners. Do we have good manners? Are we following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in our manners? When we deal with others and controlling our angers, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the muttaqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave from the description, النَّاسِ Those who control their anger and those who forgive the others. And Allah said, وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And Allah loves the doers of good. Allah loves you when you control your angers and you forgive others. When you have good conduct, good morals. Allah will love you. Remind yourself that through your good manners that you're going to be from the best of the believers in faith. Remind yourself when you go home today that when you have good manners, that Yom Al Qiyamah, you're going to be the most beloved and the closest to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remind yourself about how heavy it's going to be in the scale of good deeds. As you've received the deed, that, the most deed that will enter the people into the Jannah, and you have the deed when you come Yom Al Qiyamah that you reach the level of that one who is praying during the night and fasting during the day through your good manners. And you have a guarantee from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you will get a house in the Jannah. 